Hello, summoners, and welcome back to another episode of Pro Guides, best champion of main, now on patch 11.23. The champions that we pick for this series are strong picks with high performance but have low, low ban rates and are unlikely to be nerfed anytime soon. They are reliable picks for climbing and are worth investing your time in. We also have a series that covers the most broken, contested picks in each role, so be sure you're subbed to the channel so you don't miss out on when we post those as well. We'll be starting things off with top lane Urgot. The only real downside Urgot has is, well, he kinda looks weird. He may technically be ranged, but he still pretty much fights in melee range, so you're not really able to bully many opponents with autos early. So his first few levels kind of struggle. But once you get some levels, things quickly change. Specifically, you need to hit the points where the cooldown on your shotgun knees go down. Your passive is the core of your trading, so when you can only use them every 30 seconds, there's a pretty big window where you aren't much of a threat. But once you do have them up more often, you're able to tussle with even the strongest of duelists. Then once you reach two full items, there are very few champions who can ever hope to beat you in a 1v1 situation. If you're tired of being stuck in your current elo, the first step to climbing is fixing your champion pool. That's why we make these videos so you can find the right champion or champs for you. After you decide on what you're going to be playing, then you have to learn how to play it correctly. It may take many, many games to learn a new champion, but you don't have to spend that many days or weeks doing it alone. No one wants to do things alone, right? Our top tier coaches over at ProGuides.com can help you figure out exactly what you need to work on. They're available 24-7, so it's never really a bad time to try one out. I promise there's at least one that specializes in exactly what you're looking for. These guys have spent years reaching the top of the ladder, so why wouldn't you want to steal all their solo queue tips and tricks? All you have to do is click the link in the description. Now let's get back into the video. Our next top laner that we'll be taking a look at is Garen. For a long, long time, Garen was considered one of the most noob champs in League. He was super prevalent in the lower elos thanks to his super simple kit, but he fell off as he got to the higher ranks. But Season 11 changed that, and he's become a somewhat common sight. This is due to how strong his laning is. Garen's one weakness is that he doesn't have true gap closing abilities, so he is a little bit susceptible to being kited. But given that god tier champions of top lane this season have been bruisers like Fiora, Camille, and Riven, that's not an issue because they want to get into melee range as well. As Garen, you simply overpower them when you go in for a trade, and they can never really reach a point where they can outscale you in a 1v1. Our last top laner is Orn. Our last two picks were more for hard carrying your games, but if you do enjoy playing tanks, he'll be the one for you. Picking a tank gives you one big advantage from champ select. A tank will pretty much always be more useful than a carry in a 5v5. Since a lot of games are determined by fights around Dragon and Baron, this alone can be the reason that you win some games. Aside from what he brings to teamfights, there's also his passive. Being able to upgrade your teammate's mythic items means that your team has one concrete advantage over the enemy team. This can easily be the deciding factor in an otherwise super close game. Now, taking a look at the jungle, we'll be starting off with Vi. She received some pretty minor changes on 11.22, but those changes have actually pushed her up into the OP tier. Still, she's still very underpicked and almost never banned, so hop on the train before people catch on. One of the best things about Vi is how super consistent that you can be with her. She's farm heavy early and scales super nice as the game goes on, so you aren't pressured to coin flip early fights. And once you're level 6, her ultimate is basically a guaranteed kill on any lane that has CC or damage to follow up. Our second jungler is Elise. With the Bruiser Assassin Hybrid Meta Gun, other early game jungle picks have naturally become stronger, and Elise is back in a comfortable spot. She's a bit more of a high risk, high reward pick. Your success with her will entirely come down to how well you path early with her. If you don't really accomplish much, she falls off hard for 5v5s, and you kind of just lose the game. But if you're able to path to the right lanes at the right time, you should easily be able to snowball fast and hard, and quickly take the entire game under your control. If you're not confident that you have 100% efficient pathing and know which lanes to target, a certain website with a bunch of coaches may be able to help you out. They don't even pay me to say that. The third jungler to invest some time into on patch 11.23 is Nocturne. Like Vi earlier, he is one of the champions that is able to get consistent results due to his low variance playstyle. Unless there are very easy to gank lanes, you'll just power farm till level 6. Then use his ultimate to gank any low mobility over extended lanes and then just go back to farming. Rinse and repeat that in the early game and you'll be able to get off to a good start. In the mid to late game, you'll prefer to use his ultimate to make picks before fights. But if the enemy team is grouped too well, don't worry, there's a build that we have for you that is a pretty beefy one. So you can be the one to pull the trigger and engage fights. Now for the mid lane, we'll be starting off with Singed. <laughs> yes, Singed in the mid lane. This pick has been something that has been doing really well into pretty much every meta pick. He's even seen some play in Master Plus games. Singed mid mostly works thanks to Predator. You shove out the lanes with your poison and then use your priority to go for a roam to either help out your jungler or gank your side laners. This is a lot more team oriented than Singed top, which looks at proxy and side lane more than just ganking and skirmishing, and is honestly a pretty fun way to play the game. 
just make sure that you aren't pointlessly roaming at times where you just end up giving up farm and accomplish nothing. Because when Singe falls behind, he quickly becomes like high school math, just useless. I guess unless you're playing Velkaz, because you know, geometry could kind of kick in, but like, you know, who cares? Anyway, moving on. Another team-oriented mid lane that we have for you is Zillion, but instead of being a chaotic roaming skirmisher like Singed, he's more of a ramping support. Your main goal early is just to farm up and survive the laning phase. In the first few levels, your bombs don't do much, so you'll have to learn how to set up the wave for farming under turret. But once you have some AP and points in Q, you can quickly clear waves in just a few seconds. In the mid and early game, Zillion actually does pretty good damage if you can manage to land a double bomb. So be sure to either slow down your target first with your E, or just wait for an ally CC. Landing this combo will pretty much ensure that you're going to be able to win fights. As the game goes on, you'll be more and more of a support. Don't get me wrong, Zillion does a lot of damage once you have a lot of AP. But that damage is all in his Q alone, and mobile enemies can quickly avoid this. So focus on enabling your teammates and playing to appeal for carries that get dove in fights. Our final mid laner is Rumble. He's been a really really good pick that's been heavily slept on at the moment, but we think that Rumble is going to be incredibly strong with the new Shadow Flame. Rumble has super high base damages and that's why we're going to be able to go for all ins basically as soon as he hits Sorcerer's Shoes. With the addition of Shadow Flame, he has a magic pen item that he can go for right after his mythic, so you'll be able to snowball super hard into the mid game and basically one shot any squishy champion that walks anywhere near you. Moving things down to the bottom lane, the first pick that we have for you is Kindred. Kindred ADC definitely is not meta, but here's why it works so well. When you lock her in and champ select, you can force people to dodge. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> Just kidding. When you're picking which marksman to play bot lane, the general rule is the higher the damage output, the riskier the pick. Hyper carries do insane damage, but lack mobility to escape things like J4, ult, or blitzcrank hook, unless you are Vayne, who is just insane all around. More mobile champions like Ezra or Lucian are super safe, but they don't have that hard-hitting consistent DPS. Kindred has the strengths of both sides. She has super high DPS and even does percent base damage, so she can shred tanks. And with her Q-Sop, she's a super safe pick, able to dodge and reposition without the need of a ton of peel. Then her ultimate gives another layer of safety, allowing you to survive unavoidable bursts like Zed or Vi ultimates. I know our analyst always has a soft spot for Kindred. She was his first Mastery 7 champion, <laughs> and she's consistently been one of his highest win rate champions in ranked every season. No matter what the meta is, she's definitely one of his real comfort pick. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What's your one go-to comfort pick? For me, honestly, it's probably Talon. I played him since his release in Season 2, and he's been with me ever since, which is much more than I could say about my access. Doesn't matter. <laughs> what is yours? I want to know down in the comments below. Our second bot lane carry is Twitch. Generally, I'm pretty against Halo Blades on ADC. I think it's an early game cheesy rune that isn't as strong in teamfights. But you're playing Twitch like an assassin with a setup, hence the collector's second item. Your goal is to constantly be making picks on squishy champions anytime that they overextend. Now, all that being said, you still do have really good teamfight damage, especially once you have Hurricane. Just be sure to be patient and position in a spot where you can blow up the squishy backliners before they can even react. Our last bot lane is Zix. He's arguably the safest, most consistent pick that you can go for in the bot lane due to his ability to neutralize any 2v2 by constantly shoving in waves. Obviously, you can't do this right from level 1. He likes the damage and you'll go oom if you just spam Qs on cooldown. But once you have your Terror and Lost chapter and you have a few points in your Q, you're going to be able to keep your opponents under their tower, chipping away at their health bars or at the turret if it's not too risky to walk up. Now for our supports, we'll start with Sona. She's been the highest performing support for several patches in a row now in Plat Plus games, so it's really a wonder why she's such a rare pick. But hey, that just means that she isn't contested, so you can really just be abusing her right now. A lot of her success is due to the bottom lane meta. Killing supports aren't doing too hot in general, so you're basically free to scale up in most games. In the event that you do run into something scary like Leona or Nautilus, just go for a Guardian rune page to up your odds of survival. Our next support is Maokai. Riot has tried several times at this point to stop Maokai's support from being such a dominant pick, with yet another attempt just last patch. But the 11.22 changes did absolutely nothing. That's probably because they're targeting the wrong areas. He isn't a broken support because of his passive sustain, or because of his W doing way too much damage. He's broken because he has a point and click unavoidable route to make picks with, and he has two basic abilities on low cooldowns that provide a ton of disruption in teamfights. To actually gut Maokai's support and make him good as a top laner, I think that he'd have to lose his Q's displacement and his saplings would need a mini rework of some kind. Finishing off our list, we have Zyra. Zyra is the absolute best pick if you want to be a lane dominant support player. She can basically win lane all on her own, with her plants providing a ton of oppressive poke, all the while your ADC safely farms. There's one thing that makes her head and shoulders above the other poke mages. Usually the answer to a poke heavy playstyle is to go for an all in. But if an opponent tries to dive against you as Zyra, they're running right into your full combo, and that combo does a lot of damage. 
In most situations, this is enough to trade back at least one kill, if not kill both enemy bot laners. Outside of the lane, look to constantly poke as much as possible. Even just a single planet attack will do a pretty big chunk of damage as it applies your Leandris and Demonic Embrace burns to your opponents. As far as atomization goes, try to always stick to the build that we have here for maximum damage. Rallies is a big bait item on Zyra in my opinion. And that is it for our top 3 champions on patch 11.23. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure you sub so you never miss out on our meta guides, and you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know what your absolute favorite comfort pick is down in the comments below. And one last thing, please do not forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can go ahead and discuss the league further, or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.